An espresso, a double, please. Double espresso. Yes, thank you. Pretty good. Yeah. Have you tried Tim Hortons though? Okay, so we're over here at the Trick Stuff booth and in my hands are a bunch of 3D printed titanium levers. Now they're starting to move away from aluminum and into this printing method, which allows them to make things more hollow, customizable and ultra light. In addition to that, they're super strong because of the material. And then over here is the shock basement and down tube junction of Intense's M29 prototype downhill bike. Now this piece, is 3D printed from aluminum powder and it allows them to rapidly prototype different shapes, pivot points, and ultimately weld right onto this. So Jeff Steber and the Intense team are able to take this quickly manufactured aluminum part and build an entire prototype bike much more rapidly, lighter, and move into more complicated shapes. Now both Intense and Trick Stuff are not quite ready to put price tags or products on the market in terms of the 3D printed titanium levers or the prototype downhill bike just yet. But I'm sure you'll see a lot more products moving to this type of manufacturing in years to come. I'm here at ND Tune Suspension and they have this new hybrid shock. And this uses an air and a coil spring to support it. This super simple looking inline shock only has a rebound adjuster. There's no compression or climb switch to be found on this thing. ND Tune sets up the shock to fit your specific bike. Another reason it doesn't have a climb switch is because of the high tech valving that they have put in place in this shock. Now, ND Tune draws a lot of experience from rebuilding motocross and mountain bike shocks over the years. Now, another benefit of that is that it will help fit a lot of different frames without any constraints. I do think that ND Tuned has the experience to be able to set up a shock based on the rider weight and the bike kinematics, but leaving just one adjuster does leave some things to be desired, especially when you're talking about all the other competitive shocks out there on the market. ND Tune says that their 12 millimeter shaft also works well in conjunction with bikes that have a yoke that put a lot of force through the shock as it compresses. The smaller Portuguese brand still wants to compete with the big dogs out there though, and this shock comes in at 290 grams, which puts it a little bit lighter than a Fox Float X2. Now this shock is still in the prototype stage, but I'd be really interested to try this on a bunch of different bikes. This hybrid system with a coil and air spring would offer some benefits on bikes that have a little bit more of a linear kinematic. So there's no price or timeline for release just yet, but hope to see it come into the pink bike office soon. I'm here at Schwalbe and I've got their new Tacky Chan downhill tire. And we just launched a review on that so you can head over to pink bike and read Mike Kasner's thoughts about it. Now this tread is a lot more precise, they say, than the Magic Mary. And what that means is depending on the terrain, it can be a little bit easier to feel the shoulder knobs. It's also a tire that they say works front or rear. And it was developed in conjunction with some other teams and riders such as Almarie Perron. The big thing they were looking for in the Tacky Chan was a little bit more precision when leaning over to the side knobs. And Schwalbe says they've actually built in quite a bit of progression with these types. Those are the little divots you see that are molded into the tire tread. Really curious to try this tire because it does look a little faster rolling and also maybe a little bit more progressive in leaning over to the side knobs than say the Magic Mary. I'm also wondering how it's gonna react as a rear tire because it looks to be quite more open than the Big Betty, which is typically the rear specific tire. Now the Tacky Chan is available in a couple different options. They have their two compounds, the Ultra Soft, denoted by the purple stripe on the tire tread, and then their regular soft, which is an orange stripe. They also have it available in the three harder hitting casings, the Super Downhill, Super Gravity, and Super Trail. And of course, they haven't left out 27.5 or 29 for all of those options either. We're here at the Evoc booth and I'm holding their new torso protector that's made for the bike park and uses their recyclable light shield flex technology that has this sort of rubberized honeycomb shape. And this one actually has magnetic clips 
uh, two on the side and then adjustable straps over the shoulders. Another really cool feature, they're big on the magnets. They have a separate pack that attaches very quickly and sells separately for 75 euros. The protector itself comes in one size for now, large, extra large, but they say there's more coming. This one costs 180 euros and is perfect for the bike park. We're here at the Cavalry Bikes booth and behind me is their new e-bike. This thing is pretty wild. It's a high pivot gearbox e-bike with 130 Newton meters of torque. Now the motor is made in conjunction with Valio cycles and uses a seven speed FE gear gearbox. And this is definitely a trend that we're seeing here at Eurobike 2023. The combination of e-bikes and gearbox is definitely a thing that is happening. The front triangle is carbon fiber and is made in France, as is the aluminum rear triangle. Now this one's still in the prototype stages, so there are a couple 3D printed parts, but those will be formed from aluminum. Now there are a couple reasons for the high pivot just besides its bump eating ability. They've actually rotated the motor and compacted everything to make the chain stay as short as possible. So it also gets a 27.5 rear wheel. At this time, the prototype doesn't have a name that we can talk about, but I can tell you that it has 160 mils of rear wheel travel and pairs with a 180 or 160 travel fork. Cavalry hopes to have the bike ready to sell by the end of the year. They'll have two components packages, one starting at 10K, the other up at 13,000 euros. Now this is definitely a beastly EMTB, but Cavalry worked hard on the geometry to keep the rear end maneuverable and give it a slack head tube angle. Now that really high torque motor does come at an extra weight penalty. The whole bike weighs 25 kilos as seen with a lot of carbon components, but Cavalry says that all the weight is kept super low on the bike and the very short chainstay helps to make it very maneuverable. Another really interesting part of this bike is the auto shifting that's built in. Now that's something that Valio Cycles is looking to compete with against Shimano with their new free shift. Hello? Is anybody home? Looking for some bikes. Thought this was supposed to be Eurobike, no?